Hello everybody, this is Counterfeit Christianity Part 2, Phony Intentions. And, um, you know, just like last time we talked about Counterfeit Christianity Part 1 of Pharisees, something that it's always important to do is not to view people um, through what you know and judge them by it, because they don't know what you know. And not only that, but, you know, understand sometimes we're immature in some areas and you have to give some grace. You have to give some, some tender love and care for these people in these areas. And so if you're not following be the gospel yet on our Facebook page, please take time, put like, follow us. Um, whenever videos come out, we're going to be coming out with videos every week. Uh, we're going to increase the intensity of our videos as well. We're going to start you know, tackling different themes and subjects like October, we're going to be talking about surrender. Um, we have a lot of different ministers from around the world that are going to be touching on the subject, giving testimonies, giving their personal experiences, and what the Word of God says, and how to walk it out. So that's going to be amazing. It's going to be phenomenal, and we're very excited about that. Um, other things, if you'll be praying with us on, there's um, an opportunity for us to go into... Um, the Philippines and we're, we're praying about it uh, as there's contact there that wants us to go and, and, and do some crusades there and so please, please be praying with us on this uh, we really want to do what God wants and not just because the opportunity arose but exactly what he wants us and where he wants us okay so um, let's dive into this uh, phony intentions you know, the one thing that has really become prevalent, and I think it's a large part because due to uh, social media and, and, and the internet and profiles and MySpace and, you know, all these different things that have really been coming up, I begin to realize that we have taken on, as a church, we've taken on so many of the wrong things we, we've, we've started developing habits that are just completely wrong and not okay just because of social media and one of these things is I was watching a Christ, well, it wasn't a Christian comedian but it was it was on a, a Mormon bar right and it was a comedian so it was very clean humor and he, he was talking about how he loves getting credit for things that he really doesn't even do. And, and it's kind of humorous because he's dressing truth in the reality of what's actually going on with, yeah, just with everything. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no way to explain it other than like with life. He, he's, he's covering these, these sad realities that have even come into the church with with humor and so he says i love to get credit for something that i never even truly intended to do so he talks about the lunge right if somebody drops something and you, and you do that lunge like the halfway lunge like you're going to grab it for them and maybe you have the intention of grabbing it for them but you don't grab it for them but they say oh thank you so he said this comedian he's like i i, I got two wins one for the appreciation for doing something I didn't even do. And two, I got to trick the person. And I was like, man, how crazy is this? That this guy f understands that this is a phony intention. This is a, a false intention. And we see this throughout Facebook, especially with Christians. So I'm going to... I've been guilty of this, okay? I've been guilty of this. And something that we need to adjust, something we need to change. And so we, we look at this, and somebody is going through a hard time. Somebody needs some finances. Uh, maybe it's a ministry. Maybe it's just a person you know. Uh, maybe it's somebody that God's putting on your heart. And it's very easy for us to just say, my thoughts and prayers are with you. And that's it. That's where we leave it. But there's no action. Right? There's no action. I'm sending good vibes your way. 
oh, I'm there with you in the spirit. But there's no action. Sometimes that might be all we have to give is our thoughts and prayers. But a lot of times that's just not simply the truth, is it? So imagine if the body began being the body and began doing. Because, I mean, think about this. Your friend decides, you know, hey, he's going to move. He lets you know a week in advance. Hey, I'm going to move. I could use your help. I can use your assistance. So will you help me move? And on your Facebook profile, you change your picture because everybody's done this at one moment or another, right? Change your picture and they put the picture of a U-Haul because they're sympathizing with the person that's moving. And then they respond back to them. Oh, I wish I could be there. But, you know, my my thoughts and prayers are are with you. And, uh, yeah, my, my heart is with you in this move. But there's no action. You know how ridiculous that would be? You know how, how profoundly crazy? You, you, you know what I mean? You would see a friend like that and be like, ah, I'm not going to call on you ever again. Don't, don't call on me when you need to move. You know, that's just the attitude people get. And what do we do? We, we change the social media picture. We, we'll, we'll change um, just different things. We're bringing awareness, right? And really, in truth, if we're honest with ourselves, we're not bringing awareness. We're doing the least amount we can do so that we can say we're making a difference. And this is coming to the church. So imagine, instead of, my thoughts and prayers are for you, that if somebody says, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time. Uh, I need, you know, to replace a part in my car. Oh, okay. Well, I'm, I don't have... 500 bucks to replace the part in your car but here's ten dollars here's five dollars here's a dollar right but if 500 people that they go to to church with on a sunday morning or or they they're around as far as the body of christ hey they would have all the money that they needed very quickly this is how the body operates think about your physical body when you get a cut White blood cells rush to the wound because it's it's allowing red blood cells to escape the path they're supposed to be on. So, as the body of Christ, we're supposed to come together and help each other legitimately. Not just have a phony intention. No, no, no. We don't want a phony intention. We want real intentions. We want the intention to come with action, to come with impact, right? Because, you know, I can say, I trust. I trust, right? As much as I want, I can say, well, you know, um, I trust Joshua. I, I, I trust Chris. Um, um, yeah, I trust them. And then I never actually pl- give them any task. I never actually require anything of that trust. So you would say, well, how deep is that trust? Well, that trust isn't very deep at all, right? And we go to James, and we can see in James, it says, and, you, and faith without works is dead. Right? So trust without works is dead. So I can boast as much as I want that I trust in something. And if I don't trust, truly trust in it, it's dead. It's fake. It's, it's phony. And this is what we've done with intentions. This is what we've done by saying, oh, uh, my thoughts and prayers are for you so we can get the pat on the back. All right, I did something. What did you do? What did you do? That's my question. Trust without works is dead. It doesn't benefit any. That's why it says you're out on the streets and you have the ability to help feed someone. Maybe they're having a tough time. Maybe they need a hug. This happened. We're in Bolivia. Finished training. We took these people out on the streets, never been out on the streets before. And I said, you know what? Just be willing. Find one person to minister. Don't worry about praying for a hundred people. Find one person that you can just show the love of God to. This gentleman, he took those words and he ran with it. He was walking with his team. He sees this glue kid. 
So on the streets of Bolivia, if you haven't been there, there's these kids that are addicted to huffing glue. So they, they sniff glue to get high, and they live on the streets. They haven't bathed. They smell horrible. You know, it's the, because they, they just pee and poop. They just have no hygiene whatsoever, right? And he sees this kid, and God tells him specifically, go talk to this kid. So he's like, okay. So he goes, excuse me. And the kid takes off running, right? So he goes, I didn't know what to do except to run after him. So he chases this guy down. This guy's not in the best shape, right? He, he's, he's in a shape. He's, he's a little round, just like me, right? <laughs> but he chases the guy down. The kid finally stops because he, he's not in good shape either because he's been doing drugs. And he stops and, and he goes, oh, thank God he stopped. He goes, why are you chasing me? He goes, because you took off running. He goes, well, what do you want? And he goes, I hadn't thought about it. I hadn't thought about what God wanted me to say. He just told me to talk to him. He goes, so in that moment, I thought in my, my thoughts, God, what do you want me to do? And God says, hug him. He goes, God wanted me to, to give you this. And he walked over to the kid and just hugs him. The kid was shocked. Ends up hugging this grown man back. And they both bawl. Cry. This kid's heart melts under the power of God. And he, he ends up leading him to Christ. He, he ministers to him. He shares with him. We have the testimony. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can find that and I can post that up for you. And it was just beautiful. Beautiful testimony he goes I didn't pray for a lot of people I spent all my time with that one young man because he didn't have a good father and I realized that God sent me there that day to represent him as a father he goes I can do this I can do this anywhere and I'm like yes yes that's real intention but what do we have today Today we have people driving on the street, right, driving down the road, and they see somebody sick. And what do they do? Oh, right now in Jesus, they extend their hand out and say, "Right now in Jesus' name, be healed." Yes, yes, I, just be healed right now. Okay, all right. I did my job. Good job. Yes, yes. I prayed for fifty people today. And you want a pat on the back? You know, we, if we go back to Romans twelve one, it's a reasonable service. It's, just, it's what's expected of us. And we want a pat on the back for it. For phony intention. No, I can tell you. When you get into the thick of it, when you dive in and you're there in a drug rehab center or you're in a place where, where there's the only thing that everybody's looking to you for is help. And we grab these guys' hands and we start praying for them. Demons are coming off from left and right. And it's amazing. They're being healed. They're being delivered. They're being set free from bondages and addictions and, and all this stuff. And it's in that moment I realized that our, atten our intentions had impact. Because we could have said, well, you know, I'm praying for all these people in the drug rehab. Oh, I can go and I can visit these people. No, no, it's it's got to be greater than that. It's got to there's got to be action, action. Yes, love engages exactly. Thank you, Joshua. There's got to be action. Love has action. You can measure, you can see. I mean, think about it. Jesus says, "No greater love has a man than this, that he lays down his life for his friend." Think about it. This is Jesus speaking. And so the more that I find that I lay my, my life down for others, and it's, it's, a, it's something that a lot of people, they're not comfortable doing. They love their comfort. I can tell you, I love comfort. Everybody loves comfort. But God didn't call you to be comfortable. He called you into His Son, Jesus Christ. So get comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's that simple. 
get uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. Because he's going to put you in situations. He's going to set you up for success. To pull things out of you that you didn't even know that you have in you. He doesn't set you up for failure. He's not a bad God. He's a good God. And all he wants you to do is follow through with your good intentions. Because you can have intentions and they can be good. But doesn't necessarily mean anything unless they're acted upon. There's, there's an old saying. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. The road to hell is paved with phony intentions. You stand before God. What, what good works do you have to show for what, everything that Jesus did for you? Well, there was this one time somebody was sick on Facebook. And I just sent them a, a message. My thoughts and prayers are with you. And God's like, okay. Did you help? Did you assist? Did you visit? Was there any action? Now understand, I know it's not by works that you're saved. What I'm pointing out is that God has created good works for us to walk in. He doesn't say good intentions. is that He has good works for us to walk in and be obedient to walk out as Jesus' life lives through us. And this is what I'm getting at. So when you, when you look at this, get rid of the phony intentions. Don't, don't think, oh, I'm getting credit for something that I'm really not actually doing. It's kind of like the question I'll ask sometimes is, who has ever prayed for someone? And you see a bunch of hands go up. I said, okay, who's ever prayed for somebody by themselves? And a majority of the hands go down. And so I was curious and I said, Okay, so why did you all raise your hand? It's because when you were at church and somebody at church got prayed for it and you just happened to be there and everybody's hand goes up. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? So you're willing to do that at church, but you're not willing to do that on the streets in your everyday life, at work. See, we need to move past this this counterfeit form of Christianity of phony intentions. We need to step into what God has for us. Look, we're never going to experience the fruit of the tree unless we climb the tree and go to the branches. And this is what God wants. This is what He, he desires for us. He doesn't take any pleasure in any of those who shrink back. He doesn't take pleasure in cowardice. And we can see this in Hebrews chapter 10, near the end of the chapter. He doesn't take pleasure in it. He takes pleasure in those who push forward and seize what they're after. This is what they go after. This is what we go after. And it says, beloved brethren, you are not those who shrink back. You're the ones who push forward and save your souls. This is what scripture says. Fear has no place in your life. Give up the phony intentions. Put actions to those intentions. Make it a reality. Care for people. Focus. Love. Engage your trust. Show people how much God loves them. Demonstrate as His ambassador today. Today. How many people you come in contact with? Today. Loving on them. You know, one of my favorite... Okay, it's not my favorite. It's, it's, it's one of the things that happens a lot. Okay? And it's like God drops somebody into your mind that you weren't even thinking about. And you start thinking about them. And you're like, hmm, I wonder if I should call them. I wonder if something's going on and I should call them. But we don't do anything. We get sidetracked. You get busy doing a bunch of nothing. Maybe your favorite television show comes on. Oh, distraction. Oh, 
oh, a, a new book came in the mail. I'm just going to sit down and read the book. Okay. Reading books, there's nothing wrong with that. But you'll find out later that that person was going through something and you were there as God's ambassador to step into the situation and, and make the call. But you were too sidetracked, too busy, absorbed in self to hear what God wanted you to do. Maybe it was just there to say, leave a voicemail. Hey, I was thinking about you. I just want to tell you, I love you. I care for you. If you need to talk, I'm here. Sometimes I, I call people and I say, look, you know what? God put you on my heart today. Is something going on? Is there something I can pray with you for? Sometimes God gives me specific things about the person. This is what's going on in their life. This is what they need prayer for. Call them and encourage them. I'm like, yes, yes, that's right. I just, that's what I need to do. And they get on the phone and call. Now, do I do it 100% of the time? No, I'm guilty of myself. This, I'm, I'm sharing with these things with you because this is something we need to stop doing and begin walking out 100% of the time. So I haven't fully arrived, but I, I've, been, I've identified this in my life and I've, I've been going against it by simply just being obedient to God when God brings someone up hey I call them I contact them I message them I make contact don't let it stay just an intention let there be action in your life there was a person that I contacted I had no idea what they were going through it had been such a, a long time and I said look this is what God told me to tell you and she wrote me back and she's like, this is so what I needed to hear in this moment. You don't understand the week that I've had. And I was like, well, God does. And I'm, I'm just here as his mouthpiece to share what he wanted to tell you, to encourage you. And she was just so, so excited and so tickled by that and touched. I can tell you, I have tons of text messages where sometimes it's not even a call. Sometimes it's just a text. And people tell me, I'm crying right now. And I'm like, I wasn't trying to get them to cry. My only intention was just being obedient to what God says and letting His life shine through me. And it impacts these people, impacts people you know, impacts people you're surrounded with on a daily basis. That, that love God that truly love God or need God they need to know how much Jesus loves them and I'm telling you this is how we break through the walls that people have put up the walls that people have put up because they've been hurt and scarred and maimed and just judged and, and all these different things you know what let's practice and make it a purpose and a habit to just constantly love on people. And if God brings something, someone up in the middle of your day, He brings something up, do it. Just do it. There was, there was a lady in Brazil. I was speaking at um, a home group for, for about a month there, every week. And the first week, she had a mass on her breast. She had two of them. One was, was pretty big. It was about the size of a fist. And then the other one was about the size of a golf ball. And I don't know if I've shared this testimony with you already or not. So, just for, for those who haven't heard it, let me share the testimony. And so, we go and we pray. The, the one that was the size of a fist, boom, gone. Disappeared. Just instantly went away. And the second one shrunk down from a golf ball down to about the size of a dime. And I'm like, yes. Yes. So we pray again. Nothing. We pray again. Nothing. Right? And I'm like, what in the world is going on here, Lord? And he's like, well, this is, there's actually a problem with her daughter. She has unforgiveness towards her daughter. That's why she has this tumor on her breast. And I was like, what? Okay. 
So I looked at the lady and said, ma'am, do you have a daughter? And she says, yes, I have two daughters. I said, yeah, but you have a daughter that you're, you don't have a good relationship with right now. And then you just see terror seize her face. And she, I go, is that true? And she says, yes. I says, God says you need to forgive. And she goes, no, no. She makes this face of disgust. And she's like, absolutely not. I could never forgive her. And I didn't even ask her what it was. I Honestly, I didn't care. I just want to know among her, Christ and Christ crucified and Christ in her life. That's it, right? And um, so I was just like, Okay, I'm, I'm asking God. God, what do you want me to say? What do you? Here's this lady. She's completely resistant to your word. What do you want me to do? And normally, in normal cases, I would have said, you know what? Let's just let's just pray, and you just verbally say that you forgive, and forgive in your heart, and you can verbally say it, and, and that's good enough for me. And God tells me, can't do that with her. I'm like, what? It's like, she's thinking right now that she's hoping that you tell her that. But in her heart, her true intention is not to forgive. But she's going to lie to you. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And I said, yep. And she was like, well, can we pray? And, and I said, no, no, we can't pray because you'd be lying to me. You'd be pretending that you're actually forgiving her. And, you, and in your heart, you're not forgiving her at all. Is that correct? And she looks at me in shock. And she goes, yes, that's correct. That's true. I was like, I go, you can't hide anything from God. He knows exactly what you're thinking when you're thinking. I go, oh, you were just thinking that just now, weren't you? And she goes, yes, I was. I go, this is what's going to, you have to, this is what has to happen. You need to go to the store. And you need to find a gift for that daughter. And she's like, no, I won't do it. I go, no, no, no. And you can't be cheap about it either. You're not going to give this cheap gift to her. You're going to find the most expensive gift that you can afford right now. And you're going to go buy that gift. And you're going to hand deliver this to your daughter. And she goes, no, I'm not going to do it. Absolutely not. That's absurd. I said, okay. You know what to do. She's like, are you going to pray for me? I go, no. God told you what to do. Next week, did you do it? No, no. But I can see God's starting to touch your heart. He's poking her heart. And he's breaking down the wall in her heart. And the next week, nope, nope, I haven't done it. Next week I ask her, she's crying. She goes, no, I haven't done it. So I'm seeing God just tear away the bricks and the walls and the, and the bitterness and, and all the stuff that she, and unforgiveness that she had built up against her daughter. And I, I didn't get to see her again. Uh, the, right after we left, a week after we left, was when she had her doctor's appointment. They were going to see if it was actually cancer. And um, I get a text message. Oh, I love getting these text messages. <laughs> From our team members there in Brazil. He said, guess what? I said, what? He said, you remember the lady? I go, yes. She did it. She, she took the gift to her daughter. She went to the doctor that next week, completely healed, no mass, no cancer, no nothing. Because she truly forgave her daughter. She put action to the intention. Even when she didn't have a right intention, God made her put action to that intention so that it resulted in true forgiveness. And it's beautiful. When you begin to realize how God, He knows every single one of us. He knows our thoughts. He knows how we're made. He knows everything about us. He knows our intention. Our intention. And all we have to do is submit ourselves to God. Humble ourselves before God and just let God reign in our lives. Reign in our hearts. You know, this is why we can't have any unforgiveness. Because then we expect God to forgive us. That's why it says it. You know, you go to Mark eleven twenty-five. 25. 
Nobody brings up 25. They always talk about 22 to 24. Nobody brings up 25. 25 says, forgive so that you may be for, so that you may be forgiven. You go to Matthew chapter 6, right after the Lord's Prayer, he says, You must forgive to be forgiven. How can you expect to for God to forgive you when you're not willing to forgive others? This is what Jesus taught. This is gospel. This is what he's bringing out. He's saying, you know what? You can't allow this in your life. And it's not because of, it's something we have to do. It's something we get to do because we're the ones in bondage over unforgiveness. Not the person that, that's, that's being, that we're having unforgiveness towards. They probably don't even know what's going on. They probably don't even care. You're the one who ends up in bondage. That's why you can't have phony intentions in this. You have to truly forgive. Sometimes it's simply just deciding in your heart, God, I completely forgive them. And other times you need to go do something tangible that, that helps you break in your life this stronghold off of you. I've seen it both ways. But you know yourself. You know the intentions of your heart. Truly forgive if you're going to forgive. If not, then don't expect forgiveness from God. That's what Scripture says. So, here's the thing. Let's move past these phony intentions. Let's step into true obedience. Let's step into true obedience and total surrender to a good, loving God. Forget everything else. Forget it. Let's just walk with God. Let's be obedient to Him. Let's put action. Action. To our, our good intentions. Not the bad intentions. Throw those to the side. That's the devil. Good intentions. Let's put action to Him. So that people can see us. They can see our conduct. And they can see that God is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our Father, and that we are in Christ Jesus by our nature, by our character, and by our actions. I love you. I hope this has helped you in some way. Bless you. And we look forward to next week. We're going to be finishing our Counterfeit Christianity series, and we're prepping for our next series called Lies That We Have All Prayed. We're going to be exposing some major lies that have entered the church, exposing them completely and utterly. And it will change your life. I guarantee it will change your life and how you view God and how you proceed forward. So love you. Share this. Like this. Um, share any comments. And we will talk to you next time.